Good morning. Hey, good morning. I guess I have to turn off my music, but that's not cool. Connor and Raymond show up face to face today. What a treat. And Alyssa can always count on you. Alyssa, you did really good on your test. Just graded it this morning. It's stuck in my head. Let's see. So I have uh, finished grading the test with the exception of two of you. Martin, I know you're one of them. I see you there. And let's see, it was one other one. But anyway, I'll do that right after class. Um, the ones that it, that all worked kind of right in uh, my open math, but I fell asleep early last night, which means I'm not tired, but I'm not quite done. Let's see, let's share screen. Get going. Anybody do anything fun this weekend? Work. Work. Not it's fun. It's not really fun, is it? No. Not very often. Unless you're a calculus teacher, you know, it's fun. Let's see, do I want to say anything about the test? <clears throat> Maybe I'll say something about it tomorrow. But I'd love to stay after class. Um, I, I've said this before, but I don't, tests in school feel punitive in the sense that, you know, you just get a grade and then you're just kind of stuck with it. But in an ideal world, they're really just learning opportunities. In the in the event that you didn't get, this was worth 108 points. In the event that you didn't get 108 out of 108, you should look at it as a, you know, learning opportunity. Like, oh, cool, that means I understood, you know, 80 out of 108 things, so to speak. And so, what did I not understand? I'd love to stay after class or get together with you one on one and just talk about it. If there's something that didn't work quite right, don't don't just let it go. I mean, we are having a final in this class, so. Even if it's only for your grade, don't just ignore it and, you know, move on. Plus, the other thing that's kind of gratifying, if you if you're generally putting the time in and all of you are. Um, it's not that far between even if you got a fairly bad grade or something you're really not happy with, maybe you got a C and you're like, ah, I don't want to see um, probably in less than 10 minutes, you would you would find yourself going, oh, I understand all that now. Well, that's that's a pretty big win if it only takes 10 minutes. To actually figure out whatever went wrong and a lot and also it helps to separate out oh yeah that was kind of an irrelevant little dumb mistake it really is not that big a deal well you're right about that so to me even though you know maybe the number grade can leave you frustrated and then the other side of it is you know you're always more than welcome to argue for points um if there's something you don't think that i because i'm on your side like i want you to get a good grade too i'm not against you so if you can kind of make a case that you think you deserve some more partial credit for something, I don't see that as antagonistic um, at all. So love to have that conversation. Um, so let's see. We're in. So we're starting today, chapter 13, and we are starting into a concept called a vector do any of you know anything about vectors and, and it's okay to actually be wrong but do you know anything about vectors we do some of that in math 261 <laughs> oh you're doing a little bit in 261 oh yeah yeah so you're actually learning something about it right now um in a in a super simple way of understanding it i like to think of it as just a force So, you know, wind, wind blowing on something, that's a force. Um, when on a bike ride yesterday, I'm like pushing my, pushing down on the pedal and putting a force on that, that pedal, or you're sitting on your car and your car is on a bridge. And so the car is putting a force down on the bridge. And so 
So it can be all kinds of things, um, but it's also a force with a direction associated with it, not just, so it's like, yeah, the wind's blowing at 80 miles an hour and that produces a force on the building, but what direction is it blowing? Because one direction might not hurt the building, the other might knock it down. Um, so this is a big part of kind of engineering and physics and uh, we're gonna delve into the mathematics of it, learn about a cross product and a dot product. Incidentally, Raymond, you brought that up. Is I haven't taught 261. Are you guys doing dot products and cross products? In? Yeah, we did dot product. Um, I'm not sure about cross product, mm -hmm. but I, I think we might have. Yeah, and I th these are I'm gonna, I'm gonna hopefully give you a good conceptual understanding of what these things can do. Um, because I think I, I think I was taught those three times and didn't really understand what it was. Um, I mean, I could do it across a dot product is the easiest thing in the world. If you can multiply whole numbers and add them together, yeah, do a dot product. But what the heck did I just do? Like, I have no idea what I just did. I mean, I, I don't yeah. want that to happen. So we just did like um, rank and um, kernels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway. The concept of a vector is just really a powerful thing. It's something you want to understand. It, it, this leads into, into Calc 4, if you're going to take Calc 4 with us in the summer. But, but rather than just kind of start off with the, the notation and, and kind of how, what it, how you get the problems right in the book, because some of the problems in the book are really easy, um, you'll be happy. Um, I want to start off with, like, what, what can you do with a vector? And so... So we'll call this a warm up for you future teachers. It's a good way to start something if you're going to, you just introduce it. The students aren't thinking about it. They just barely woke up. Like give them a chance to think a little bit. So let's say we got this joint on a bridge. And, you know, you've seen a bridge. Maybe I'll, I'll erase this probably, but, you know, maybe, maybe the bridge looks like that. And then it kind of continues from there, something like that. And so here's this one joint we're looking at. And notice, this joint has got like a member pulling off to the right, one left, one up here, one over there. It's pulling in every direction or pushing. We're not actually sure. Is it pulling or is it pushing? And this is really important in engineering. What do we want this? What do we want that joint to do if this is a bridge? What do we want it to do? I'm asking you to read my mind here, but what do we want that joint to do? Not move, right? Exactly. We want to do nothing. <laughs> like, don't move. <laughs> If that joint moves, the bridge is falling, right? So we want that not to move. So thanks for reading my mind effectively, Raymond. It's an easy read, isn't it? So let's say we got forces pulling on this. We'll say this is just to keep it simple. We'll say this is pu pulling at 10 pounds. And and let's say the angle is 24 degrees and you know the angles are measured from kind of over here. So I'm basically seeing that angle right there is 24 degrees. So it's got that pulling on it. Now, if that happens, that joint moves, right? That's the only thing pulling on it. That's not good. That joint's going to move. And so, okay, well, this is a bridge. And so it's got other things pulling on it. So, whoops, that wasn't right. And let's go over here. And let's pull at 40 pounds. So notice that's four times stronger. And again, I could draw a picture of this, but I'm just going to give you the angle. Notice that's over in the fourth quadrant. So it would have to be something like negative, like negative 32 degrees. And then let's pull, I don't know, over here somewhere. Let's pull over here at, I don't know, let's say 60 pounds. So that's the biggest pull. And again, by itself, that's not enough. You have to have a force and a direction. It doesn't do us any good if we don't know what direction that's pulling. And you can see that's almost all the way over to 180 degrees. So it's a little short of 180. So maybe that's 152 degrees or something like that. I don't know. I'm just making this up. Now, one of the things you do with vectors, and I'll show you this in just a second, that's really cool is Ultimately, these arrows, really these, that's all a vector really is. That's how you represent it is just with an arrow. The arrow shows the direction. And the length of the arrow actually shows the force. Now, notice I didn't do a very good job here. I kind of did this on purpose. But if I wanted to draw these correctly, does it make sense I'd have to draw the 
10 one, however long I choose to draw 10, I should have drawn this 41 four times longer. Does that make sense? So I could fix that a little bit if I wanted to. So I'll start with the 60. If that's how long the 60 arrow is drawn, then the 10 arrow can only be, you know, a 10th of that, right? So maybe that looks like this. And then the 40 arrow would be four of those, but not quite as long as the 60 arrow. So that looks a little better. Does that make sense? So the cool thing about vectors is the length that you draw the arrow actually represents the number. So I could literally draw these 10 centimeters, 40 centimeters, and 60 centimeters, or 10 inches, 40 inches, and 60 inches. And, and, and I could measure these angles with a protractor and get this really accurate. But the question now is, this is pretty confusing. Like, what's going to happen to that joint? Is it going to move? And if it is going to move, in what direction? See, an engineer's got to know that because they might have to come in and, and attach like another cable to it and stop that from moving. Because I made this up randomly, it probably is moving. It's probably not zero. So what we're trying to figure out is what an engineer would call the resultant of this or the result. What's the result? All four, all four of these, three of these forces pull on it. And the cool thing about vectors is if you resolve these into their X, Y components, and this is exactly what you just studied in polar, um, then this is super easy. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna label these one, two, and three so that we can talk about them. So would you agree that one then, if I take, and I gotta be in degree mode to do this, you're welcome to do this with me if you want, but if I take 10 times the cosine of 24 degrees, I get 9.14. So this is one of the ways that vectors are given. It's not an ordered pair anymore. So if I take 10 times the cosine, let me see, I'm just gonna write that out. I get 9.14. And when I take 10 times the sine, as you know, that's the Y coordinate, the sine of 24, I get 4.067 or 4.07. But rather than write these as an ordered pair, because it's not really an ordered pair, does that make sense? It's not, it's not a point, it's an arrow. And so, well, the way you write a vector or the way you tell somebody, hey, this is different, is you put kind of these little less than, greater than signs, chevrons or whatever they're called. That tells somebody, hey, that's a vector. Basically, this thing is being pulled right 9.14 and up 4.07. And then collectively, what that's going to give us is 10 here and 24 degrees there. So we're breaking in, in, into its X and Y components. So this is just polar coordinates. There's nothing new here. I'm going to write this part out this time, just so you kind of have it in your notes. 10 times the sine of 24. So there's vector one broken into its X, Y components. If I do the same thing with two, and here's the thing that's really cool. If I say 40 times the cosine of negative 32, it gives me a positive number for that, 33.92. And if I do that 40 times the sine of negative 32, I get the negative automatically. I see, I see them down there in the fourth quadrant, which means you know, it's right and then down. And so I just get the negative automatically. And I get negative 21.196 or negative 21.20. I'll put the zero there just to tell somebody, hey, look how accurate I am, two decimal places. And of course, over in this, for the third one, I better get a negative X and a positive Y, right? Like I already know that's gonna happen. And, but, the, but the cool thing is, is that the, the trig takes care of itself. If I just say 60 times the cosine of 152, I get negative 52.98. So I think to myself, of course I got a negative. And if I take 60 times the sine of 152, that's a Y value, which in the second quadrant is positive. Of course, I get positive, 28.17. So by breaking these, by changing these in this so easy, so simple, by changing to X, Y coordinates, all I have to do to find the result of these is to add them. That's amazing. So 
And I'll show you something. I'll show you another way to do this in just a second that's way harder. But it turns out you can just add vectors together. And, and what you're really doing in this case is, is not adding a vector, you're adding a force. And so in this way, I can figure out what's going to happen as a result of this. And what you do is you add the x's and you add the y's. So if I take 9.14, which is positive, plus 33.92, in other words, both of the ones on the on the right, one and two are trying to pull it right. And so two of them are pulling right, but then the one pulling left is 60. It's like way bigger than the other two. And so it's it's the forces and the direction. So if I add those two positive numbers, but then subtract 52.98, the question is who wins? Well, the negative one. In other words, the 60 was alone, but it was such a bigger number that it sort of out pulled the other two, kind of a tug of war thing. It's super simple. So it's actually going to get pulled left. And notice that's not very hard. They, they competed well against each other. If I had moved the 60 over here, does it make sense it would have been getting pulled right at some really gigantic number? But they canceled a lot of each other out. And so it's not being pulled very hard to the left. Well, what about up and down? Well, 4.07 isn't being pulled up very much. But then 21 is being pulled down, minus 21.2. But then 28 is pulling up. 28.17, add all those up and I get 11.04. So this is the resulting force. Notice it's just singular, it's just one force. So now I know what's gonna happen. And if I want to, couldn't I convert it back? I could convert this back into a one single vector. So this is the xy version of the vector. And I will also tell you, also known as, because you'll see this in your book, sometimes, because it's really important not to mix these up, right? There's an x and a y component to these. So, so sometimes you write them with those little chevron signs, and we're used to x being first and y being second. So we know that's kept straight. But the other thing engineers sometimes do or mathematicians sometimes do is relabel these is like the I and the J component. So, so the downside of this is you sort of have to memorize, well, that's the X and you know that's the Y. I guess you could say they're in alphabetical order. It's a little annoying that they don't just say X and Y. Do you know what I'm saying? Is this kind of weird? Like, why would you pick some new letter for that? So you could just list them as I and J. Now, of course, you can draw a picture of this and you can say, well, if it went left, and I'll try to draw this reasonably accurately, if you went left 9.92 and then up a little longer than that, 11.04, then does it make sense that you could actually come up with this vector, which of course is the main one? I mean, this is actually the result. And so I can see that Pythagorean theorem would get me that distance, right? So I'll go ahead and write that out. 11 doesn't matter what order I do this in, 11.04 squared. I'm just gonna leave the negative number off since there's just the danger that I'll type it in wrong. 11.04 squared plus 9.92 squared, I get 14.84. And again, in, in context of this, that would be pounds. And then I can also come up with this angle right here. Notice that angle right there. Again, from what you, you now know from the last test, you could say, hey, the tangent of theta would be equal to, let's see, what do I do? Do I say 11.04 over 9.92 or is it negative 9.92? Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put the negative in and see what happens. it's a little safer to leave it off. If you leave it in there, if I left it in here, I actually got theta is negative 4 point, I'm sorry, 48.1 degrees. But you should say, well, that isn't right, because isn't this vector over in the second quadrant? But negative 48 isn't in the second quadrant. This is like in the fourth quadrant. What the heck is going on? Maybe you remember from my note sheet that inverse tangent was a little dangerous. Let's see, was that clear on my note sheet? I think I have it 
have it pretty close by, so. Yeah, remember that? Check your answer in the second or the third quadrant because it's not going to work. Where are we? We're in the second quadrant. When I did inverse tangent on it, it put me in the fourth quadrant. So it's like, I got to fix that myself. I got to say, oh, I'm 180 degrees off of that. I got to add 180 degrees to that. So a little dangerous. I prefer, what am I doing? I prefer just to leave the negative off of it, kind of do it like this. In other words, in other words, I'm just looking at a literal right triangle in front of me. I'm not thinking of this as being on the unit circle. If I do that, if I get rid of the negative, I get positive 48. So in a sense, nothing has changed. I get 48.1 degrees, but again, what do we call this angle? We don't call it that, we call it this. So if this angle is 48 degrees, then it's 180 minus that that I'm after. So if I subtract 180 from that, I get 131.9. That's the, really the answer. So basically, I know the result of this. As an engineer, I have all these forces pulling on it, and I now realize, uh-oh, bad news. It's being pulled at 132 degrees with a 14, almost a 15-pound force. And of course, this, these are ludicrous forces. That's not the forces you have on bridge. These would be like kilopounds, like 14,000 pounds. They'd be massive numbers with the cars going over it and so forth. And even just the way to the bridge. And so now that I know this, now that I took all three of these forces, which was very confusing to me, I found myself looking at that going, oh man, what's gonna happen? Being tugged left and right and up and down and I just can't reconcile all of it. By converting it to X's and Y's, you can just simply add these vectors together, add their X components, that will be the resulting X component, add their Y components, that'll be the resulting Y component. And then you can actually figure out what's happening. That's the same in every dimension. Yes, if we take this to three dimensions, which we're about to do in this chapter, um, we could add a Z component to it. In the real world, it's not two-dimensional, so that's an excellent point. And then theoretically, for you linear algebra students, it doesn't even have to stop at three dimensions. It could be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We just don't have the capacity to visualize that, but the math works in other dimensions. And so, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I will say this, what, what an engineer would do here actually is is like add a fourth force to this. And then adding the force fourth, the fourth force, they would actually figure out what that fourth one would be to make everything zero. And then they would just put that on the bridge and then, then it would be okay. I mean, that's kind of the, the way you solve it. Like you don't go, oh, look, the joint's moving, bummer. We built a bad bridge, like you gotta fix it. Um, so that's kind of cool. Now, to the power of vectors, let me show you something amazing about this. I'm going to go draw this accurately. Great. Mm. Been having serious. So I'm. Why is it doing that? <laughs> Does this look any different to you than usual? And are you guys hearing that ridiculous echo? Yeah, we. I can hear that. Yeah, I can too. So now I have two of me in here, and I've got two of one of me.
Somehow I'm in this meeting twice. That's how important vectors are. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Is that, is that any different? Is that better? That better? No. No. Somehow you got two of you in here. And you're muted. How about that? Does that make any difference? That's a lot better. I only hear one of me now. Yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Oh, that's because I'm... What the heck is going on?